You know, FIFA is increasing its efforts to grow the women's game for all and fully aware that more can certainly be done to develop the grassroots, the sporting and commercial growth of women's football, a source for growth of football worldwide. Let's get ready to dive a little bit deeper into this, this discussion with a keynote address, first of all, and it will be delivered by the first woman to occupy the high office of Prime Minister in Barbados in 2018. She presently holds the portfolios of Minister of Finance, Economic Affairs and Investment. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Mia Amor Motley. Madam Secretary, Mr. President, distinguished guests all, I'm here today to speak about the resourcing of women's football, but that's a topic that has words that are harsh to the ears and even harsher in the reality of what they receive. And to that extent, I really want to speak to you about the need to appreciate what we want to do when we talk about resourcing. We're really just trying to make people's lives better. We're really just trying to create opportunity for girls who have been ignored and who have been told that they're not good enough to be able to want to do the simple things of life and to enjoy and to be the best that they can be. And that is why the motto of daring to shine resonates so much with me. Because on this improbable journey that I and your own Secretary General and the President of Ethiopia have taken, we don't simply have to be satisfied with daring to shine. We have to be determined to do. And that's what resourcing is really about, being determined to do and to make that difference. We have contended that for so long, sports and culture create the opportunities to make global citizens. Nobody asks you for a work permit when you're the best footballer in the world. Nobody asks Rihanna for a work permit when she's the best female entertainer and most powerful one that exists, when she comes to Paris and does what she did two weeks ago. But what we do ask is for them to recognize that one or two of us in 2018 and being the first, as the president of Ethiopia said, is not sufficient. And that we have now to create a mass movement of people. And there is no better way to do that than for those glass ceilings to be broken in than in women's football. This event, particularly for us in the Caribbean with the presence of the reggae girls, will do so much to inspire every single young girl in the Caribbean that they too can be the best that they can be just as they have seen others explode on the stage. And governments at the same time are trying to fight the battle of being able to make people the best that they can be. When chronic non-communicable diseases cost us potentially four to five percent of our GDP, we have to find ways to fight the battle that allow us to be able to make each girl and each boy invested with the commitment to be fit enough. We have to find ways to cause them to believe that during their teenage years, they can navigate those years without wanting to smoke, without wanting to drink, without wanting to abuse their body, without wanting to be subject to behaviors that makes the investment that we make in them as governments marginal. And there is no better way to do it than through sports and through culture. Sports teaches them the values that you need one another on a team and to be able to work together. And no matter how much of a star one is, you can't do it alone. We have to do it together. Equally, within the realm of culture, we teach each other to care. And one of the things that we found early on in our systems, particularly in education, is that if you want to reinforce messages, if you want to reinforce values, it is far easier to do it on the field 
than it is to do it in the classroom because children never forget that message once they learn it on the field, once they learn it among their peers. To that extent, our governments in the region are more and more investing with associations and with non-governmental organizations to be able to deliver the kind of education for life, education that makes people productive citizens, not just through the formal classrooms, but through partnerships and through the development of programs that will see other kinds of support come to support our young people. We don't only need to give money, but we also need to be able to give policy framework and instruction. We also need to be able to create the people who can mentor and support and, and literally take young kids, young girls, young boys, who have been marginalized in their own households and in their own communities, but who have talent, and who will realize that talent alone, unless their spirit is nourished, is not going to carry them. So how do we as governments partner and provide the resources that are necessary to allow associations to focus not just on the talent of football, but on the talent of being a good human being and being able to master the life that they want to live but are constrained because of the circumstances into which they are born or the circumstances into which they find themselves. It is only through these partnerships that set a common mission, the mission of being able to make our young people the best that they can be, that we can then see talent truly, truly, truly flourish. I come from a small country. We don't have a team in women's football this year. But in the same way there was no female prime minister in Barbados before last year, we will have a women's football team at the highest levels again in this country, in this world. But we remain inspired that in our region, Jamaica and the reggae girls are going to stir it up in the words of Bob Marley. And we have every confidence in the next few weeks that the messages from Paris are going to be um, punctuated with a rhythm that is going to see the rest of the world say, ah. We believe, however, that it is not important to be the first. What is important is for there to be a continuous group of persons. And that is where the partnership with government is going to make the difference. I look forward to being able to work across the world with others because Policy in a vacuum means nothing. What matters is people and the lives of people. And I feel strongly that this kind of opportunity that we give our girls on this stage cannot be constrained by the usual disparities and gender discrimination that have attached itself to the other aspects of female participation, whether in the workplace, whether in the political arena, whether in the home, or whether on the field of sports. The ability to be able to remove the disparity in pay, in emphasis, in communication, in every aspect is what is needed. And it is almost unbelievable that all, as we go into the third decade of the 21st century that we are even having this discussion about gender disparity in something as simple and as noble as sports. I hope that by having this convention, Madam Secretary, and the leadership that you have shown in being able to confront these difficult issues, that you will be able to make that definable difference in the minds of men and women, such that they encourage their children, their girl children in particular, to understand that they can be the best that they can be by simply setting the goals and pursuing those goals by daring to shine. In this city, a few weeks ago, a young Barbadian girl who 10, 12 years ago was just simply wanting to dream to be the best that she could be has now exploded on the world stage as the most successful female entertainer ever. We have the ca capability to see people shine. We have to give them the opportunity. What is the role of governments 
if not to create opportunity? What is the role of associations if not to create opportunity? And if we have that common mission of creating opportunity, then if we fail to partner to create that space, we have only ourselves to blame. I ask us to recognize that the moment is upon us to admit unto girls that great, great possibility of them daring to shine, but thereafter being determined to do all that they can do to bring along the others. When I was a young girl, there were very few other people in the world whose name I knew as Mia. And I had a name that I recognized in one other person. She happened to be a footballer. Her name was Mia Ham. And I felt proud even though that I was not a footballer, and even though I'd never met her, that we shared the same name. That is the power of example and the power of inspiration. I wish this football FIFA tournament to inspire so many across the world over the next few weeks. And I certainly know that those who are Caribbean will want, after they see the reggae girls hit the field this weekend, to believe that they too can be part and parcel of this great sporting event that has done more to unite the world than any other political event can do. Thank you, and God bless FIFA World Cup women's football. Thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister, for reaffirming your support and also stressing the importance of our political leaders to play an active role and be a part of this movement in order to fast track it.